Psalm 88, 4 through 6 continues that God works all things together for the good of those who are faithful. Verse 4 and 5 of 88 reads, I am reckoned among those who go down to the pit. I have become like a man without strength, forsaken among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, and they are cut off from your hand. My affliction is mortal. My friends already speak of me as dead, like I have one foot in the grave and the rest of me will follow shortly. My strength is gone. Without your help, Lord, I will not survive. My mind has given up on my body and my faith is weakest of all. The Hebrew word translated here as pit is the same word as used in the previous verse. The Hebrew word is Sha'ol, and it is the most often translated as a grave or hell. The psalmist sees himself as without hope, soon to be unbound from his mortal body, unpitied and left only to the corruption of our mortal flesh. Adam Clark writes, I reckon to think forsaken means stripped among the dead. Both the fourth and the fifth verses seem to allude to the field of battle. The slain and the wounded are found scattered over the plain. The spoilers come among them and strip them, not only the dead, but those who appear to be mortally wounded and cannot recover, being so feeble, not strong enough to resist. Hence the psalmist says, I am a man that hath no strength. Verse 6 of Psalm 88 reads, You have put me in the lowest pit, in the dark place, in the depths. There are the reflections of a good man, but without the assurance of a, an acceptable sacrifice that could guarantee restoration. Something that we have, that we are, are privileged to enjoy on this side of the cross. The similes conjured up by the psalmist were those of mental darkness, a subterranean den- dungeon, a, a confinement in the realms of the dead, or plunged into the lowest abyss. The human mind can descend into the depths of despair far lower than the body is able. Never having been pers- never having personally experienced what the psalmist is going through to gain an understanding of these emotional upheavals, I must surrender to the prophecy of Isaiah when he confronts the good king Hezekiah with in God's with God's word. In Isaiah 38, 1 through 6. About this time, Hezekiah became deathly ill, and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to visit him. He gave the king this message. This is what the Lord says. Set your affairs in order, for you are going to die. You will not recover from this illness. When Hezekiah heard this, he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I've always been faithful to you and have served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. Then he broke down and wept bitterly. Then this message came to Isaiah from the Lord. Go back to Hezekiah and tell him, This is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor David, says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life, and I will rescue you from and the city, the city from the king of Assyria. Yes, I will defend this city. I suppose the point I'd like to share is this. Our God hears the prayers of the faithful, and he will always answer, albeit it may not be the answer that we desire. However, he will give the faithful the strength to weather the storm. We read in Hebrews 13, 5 through 6, Be sanctified, be satisfied with what you have, for God himself has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Therefore, we may bodily say, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me?